So we haven't we haven't really done a um update on other tanks um in a while, so I thought I'd change it up. You know, we've been doing a lot of how to's and all that and how it cares and so thought I'd change it up. We haven't really done one of these in probably a couple months, so if you knew if you're new here or still um been around for a while then you know we'll show you what's going on and telling you what's changed and what's happening and all that stuff so for people that don't know or are watching this and haven't subscribed or haven't been subscribed before this is a rimless a 20 gun rimless made by Innovo, Innovo, In, innovative marine that's hard to say and powered by a phoenix 20 or 7 plus and we got filtration wise we got uh, AC 50, um, I'll clear 50 and then I'll clear 30. This started off being the filter and then I realized I needed more. So I got an AC 50, probably a little too much, but it's, it's on there now. So it, and it does fine. So we just got two big, um, powerhouses filtering this, um, tank. And then we got heat, heater wise, we just got the fluval, um, heaters, you know, nothing special. And then we got the, Oh, uh, then we got skim Eheim skimmer at 350, and then I guess anything anything else I got air hose going. Um, no air stone, just straight out the tube. Just you know, just to keep aeration, cause I don't always keep on the skimmer. So this kind of you know they kind of work off each other. If this isn't on, then this will be on, or if this is off, this will be on, and so it just keeps you know the surface moving constantly, no matter what. Because sometimes the filters, sometimes they don't always move the surface that much. Because I keep the water level so high, so that's that's the reason for that. So, what we got for substrate is, we got ADH substrate. Um, I think it's a 20 pound bag, if I remember. And we got um, we got the power sand under it with all the additives. And then we got the ADA on top of that. And then, for Rockscape, we got um, Sirius Stone. Um, we got... I think about 30 40 pounds of it i think it's just 30 and then for plant wise we got as a carpet down here we got some monte carlo get some shots of that hasn't fully carpeted yet just because of the things that happened when i first set up this tank but it's starting to really f um full in now so i i'd probably get good guess probably two or three months and we'll have this thing pretty much full but i think it looks pretty cool right now how it looks how it's you know, it actually looks really good just how it is right now, so I like it. And then for our back plants, we got um, Bakupa. I think it's the Carolina species. I'd have to, you'd probably have to confirm that. Um, but it's grown to the top. I need to do a little trimming. I did one not too long ago, so it's already about to the top. Um, but obviously, I just keep planting and planting, and they just keep growing and growing. So I literally like the plant. It's fast growing, um, easy to care for. It's now not much to it, and it's a good looking plant especially for the back, but you can see it's touching the surface. And then for our right side, we got um, Java Fern Narrow. Obviously the name with the narrow leaves than the regular Java Fern. And it's not actually buried, it looks like it is, but it, um, the ribosome is above the surface. Um, so I know a lot of people ask about that. But obviously good looking plant, you know we got a little bit um, actually, I think these were the original leaves when I first got them, so overall the plant's doing really healthy. And then obviously right here we got big old thing of um, s -repins. These started off like super small. If you can go back to my channel through the series, these were super small. And you might be saying, aren't they supposed to be kind of be carpeting? They're growing taller than they are wider. And that's actually the look I was going for. So I've, you know, purposely trimmed it that way. Obviously you can see it's getting a little wider right here, which I don't mind. Um... But it's probably grown probably inch, inch and a half wider than when I first got it. And the tallest points are probably four inches tall. I mean, a lot of them back here are re about four inches tall, which is about the max an s and usually gets. But, yeah, I got to, these grow pretty fast, so I have to constantly trim them. I usually keep them to about this height right here. But you can see how, you know, if you put a line right here, just how much taller they get real fast. Um... Stocking wise, we did have an Amazon puffer. He's not with us no more, but um, we got a bunch of snails from when, you know, once the puffer was gone, snails started, started populating because they're not yet eaten. So because of that, we got, uh, you probably won't be able to see him. I'll show him if I do, but we got a zebra loach hiding somewhere. He's usually behind this rock. 
and he keeps the snail population um, down to the minimum. You can see all the empty shells. I need to clean them out. But then for stocking, I thought it'd be a really cool idea to you know bring some colors. So I got two German blue rams right there, two males, and we got I think about twenty, fifteen to twenty auto singlets. I, I they're really hard to count these days. So I, there's some around fifteen to twenty. I don't know the exact number now because it's just once they're in there, they kind of hide and they kind of disappear. But we got a bunch of there. They're the ones that keep this tank looking as is. Obviously, I gotta clean the glass myself. Clean the glass myself. Obviously, you can see a little haze on the glass. That's you know on my side. But overall, the tank is it's super clean. I mean, um, really good looking um, scape. It just it's, it's a real, overall. I mean, it's not that hard of a tank. You know, the scape isn't that complex. Obviously, I wish I did go a little more complex, but obviously I, at the time I didn't want to spend a buttload. I mean, this scape, the rocks themselves are already a hundred over a hundred dollars with the rocks, and it's not much here. So everybody knows these rocks get expensive fast. But it's a good-looking tank, and <clears throat> you know you can stand up and look at it from this view, and not a bad-looking plant tank at all. Obviously, when this plant um, gets redone here in about a year. Um, but it'll, it'll look a lot different. Probably not. I mean, it will look a lot different, but we're mostly going to keep the same stones. They're just going to be repositioned different ways. And a lot of these plants will keep the S repins. The Monte Carlo will actually fully carbon the entire tank this time. And we might keep one. I'll definitely probably keep the Pacupa, the Java Fern, and it's going to go in a different tank. And I'm going to, I'm going to probably add maybe like, maybe like a red. I mean, just, just something that really makes this tank pop. It's not something to put in the corner, but you know that's the future. We could worry about that um, another time. But um, kind of what I do maintenance-wise is 50%, um, well about 40% to 50% on more change weekly. And I the additives I kind of add are very simple. I do obviously I just do <clears throat> prime um, stability, and then um, three times a week I do Excel or every other day. Um, nothing else I really do weekly, so, you know, occasionally I'll put some of this in even though I don't really need it, um, just to keep, just to keep stuff in control. And then my fertilizer wise, uh, if I can pull it out here, I got two big bottles of, you know, I, I just dose aquarium, easy green. Obviously my bottle's still filled up like all the way and that's like almost a year's worth. And I dose this basically weekly. Um, I'm not running CO2, so I only dose this half of what it should. If I had CO2, I'd be fully dosing it. But obviously, we all know if you don't, if you dose some fertilizer without CO2 and you dose a lot, um, you'll get major allergy issues. Um, so we only dose about j just so the food, just so the plants can get a little bit of food. We don't go crazy on the fertilizer, but it definitely keeps the plants nice and healthy. Either way, but the Excel does a big part in that too. But I guess to end this off, the filtration, how, you know, what am I running in these filters? This one has two sponges. Usually I have a pinky filter at the top. I don't have one in there right now. Um, and then on the top, I just got, this is basically all biomedia. I have a big bag of um, Biomax at the bottom. And then I got a sponge in between that and then another bag on top of that. So this whole thing just basically biomedia. This, this, uh, that's why this is the bigger filter. This holds basically all the bacteria and this is all the, you know, polishing and cleaning filter as I like to call it so yeah that's about it for the update um if you guys comment what you guys think what do you guys think um what do you think I should add in here what do you think would look cooler I mean what, what do you guys think about this tank I'd like to know that and other than that comment like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one